Lying nearly at the center of the city in Market Square, found along the Duke of Gloucester Street in Colonial Williamsburg, is one of the city's key landmarks, originally built between 1770 to 1771. Easily spotted as you walk down the famous street with its red shaded brick, long arched windows, and its rather odd yet unique and equally offsetting pillar-free projected portico the courthouse in Colonial Williamsburg. A house of local justice and government, it was active in the community of Williamsburg for over 160 years. Lucky to be in the city again, I decided to get a closer look at the exterior of this frequently visited building. It says built in 1771 to house the James City County Court and the Hustings Court of the city of Williamsburg. This building served is the center of local administrative and judicial authority for more than a century and a half. The exterior was restored in 1932. And the interior fittings were reconstructed in 1991 to portray court justice in the late colonial era. So really old structure here. I believe it endured a fire um, around 1911, I believe. Later, I had also planned to head inside to hopefully learn more about the civil court cases and other proceedings and happenings that took place here. A tour would begin soon and I definitely didn't want to miss it. This would have been the location a crowd of angry and upset townspeople gathered outside of demanding answers for the gunpowder theft which took place directly across the street at the powder magazine. One of the more notable happenings that is known to have happened here took place by a well-respected lawyer of colonial times. Having served as the clerk of the general court for years, the duty fell on Benjamin Waller to read the Declaration of Independence, freshly delivered straight from Philadelphia, aloud from the steps of the courthouse on July 25, 1776. Waller would later be named judge of the Court of Admiralty in Williamsburg as well as served as judge on the first Court of Appeals, where he remained until the courthouse moved to Richmond, Virginia. He was also a mentor and taught law to another well-known attorney in Williamsburg, George Wythe, a man whose home I recently visited and vlogged. I'll leave a link in the description so you can watch that. A proclamation that ended the Revolutionary War between Great Britain and the United States, which officially set the borders that would form a new nation, was announced right here at the courthouse and is better known as the Treaty of Paris. As I stood outside taking in different vantage points of the colonial city's old municipal building, standing firm with a backdrop of a colorful Virginia sunset, I never find myself short of amazement here thinking of all the historical scenes that must have taken place, no matter how many times I visit here. Bearing my Colonial Williamsburg annual pass, I was anxious to finally be able to go inside the courthouse and learn more from the knowledgeable interpreters well-versed on the proceedings and affairs that took place inside these worn and weathered brick walls. What you're seeing here is what was done about 30 years ago by our trades, putting it back to what we believe it looked like in the 18th century. One thing that they forgot, where we have modern courts, there's no bench up there for a judge. We didn't go to the one judge system here in Virginia until 1869. Before then, we had a nice bench up there that could handle up to 13 magistrates, gentry gentlemen appointed by the governor for life. They do this without pay. Of course, these men who don't need the pocket change from this court. Men like George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Patrick Henry, men that are well, well respected in their counties. Uh, every county has to have a least need. We have 17 here in Jones City County. But we only need four to show up for court. When they show up, they're going to decide who's got the most seniority. He's the man who will occupy the center chair. All deliberating and voting is done up front. 
majority of voters all that's required. If there's a tie, the senior justice will break the tie. The clerk of the court, he is the law officer. It's a lifetime appointment for him also, but he does get paid. He had to go through a seven-year apprenticeship to become a clerk. And he also studied the law and became a lawyer. So is a book bound by our book binders? So it's not an old book. It's, yeah. it's a book that we bound and we use it uh, to create minutes. Because we used to hold many cases here. Yeah. So the clerk sitting at the table would then take the minutes for the cases they heard. Um, and we would use cases that actually happened in Williamsburg. So that's, you can see, uh, Vogue, a petition to renew her tab. Oh, that's Jane Vogue? Okay. Mm -hmm. And then admitted. So she was renewed. This court, people appear in misdemeanors, civil trials, paperwork being filed with the court, simple stuff like that. Lawyers sitting here, representing, usually representing people who can't be here. Bailiff boxes for the sheriff and his deputy, raised up high, because in the gallery in the 18th century, you are by standers, not by sitters. So you'd be standing, out of respect for the court, waiting for your item to be called, uh, or in here for the same reason you folks are, simply to see what's going on. You can come in and watch, absolutely, as long as you respect it. What you'll see mostly is paperwork being filed, uh, business licenses, wills, land deeds, apprenticeship contracts, simple things like that. Things that only take about two or three minutes to adjudicate. Uh, civil suits, somebody suing somebody for debt, damages, or breach of contract. Misdemeanors, a uh, very small part of the docket. This looks like This is the Virginia law. Okay, that's the law book. Okay, the Virginia law This book. literally all laws, acts of the assembly, now enforced, meaning these are the ones we're still enforcing in the colony of Virginia, with the exact table to the whole, meaning there's a table of contents. So all the current laws that are enforced live yeah, inside as the of acts that, of the assembly. As of the publishing date. Most often heard misdemeanor in here, non-attendance of church, required to go to the Sunday services at our parish church once a month. If you miss a couple of months, it's a five shilling fine. Once we get 12 men in here, we're going to see them on the lower bench. They will hear the case, be given instructions by the court, and then sequester. Unlike today, and for 500 years in British courts, there was no such thing as a mistrial by hung jury, because there was no such thing as a hung jury. They had to be unanimous. And to make sure they're going to come to a decision in a reasonable amount of time, we're going to put them in a sparsely furnished room over there with no food, no drink, no light, no heat, no pay. All they're going to get is what they see in that room over there, and what you'll see, table, benches, and a chamber pot in the corner. The door's going to get locked, and we're going to be told, knock on the door when you come to a decision. You'll hear about five to ten minutes later. That's all. <laughs>
After many years, finally being able to take the tour inside, it gave me a sense of fulfillment. And with so many interesting places within the old colonial capital to discover, who knows what will be next. <laughs>